Um, I would say that my new reading of these four scenarios leads me to, to, to the conclusion that we today we will see a little bit of all four. So in a fifth scenario, if you want to write that, you need, I, I would ask you to actually pick bits and pieces of all the four. Russia presents, let's say, some opportunities, but actually many, many challenges right now. What we can say with confidence is that the landscape of the South Caucasus and of the Karabakh uh, situation has been dramatically reshaped. Um, you know, uh, access to uh, unbiased scientific information. This is something, again, that I think uh, um, is a common problem across six countries. And Whether there are significant developments that sort of uh, make one or another scenario perhaps more likely uh, require adjustments. COVID in particular, but not only. Uh, so I wanted to uh, sort of very quickly go through the four scenarios at this stage, perhaps also as a reminder uh, of what they uh, what they were uh, for those who may not be as familiar with them. But still, let me let me ask you: Does does European uh, framework, this European framework of Eastern Partnership, does it hold ground after the political events of, of the last year? That uh, there are challenges that remain the same. So we have new opportunities, but they are the same same challenges. We cannot say about uh, uh, Eastern countries, Eastern Partnership countries as a whole, because they are very different. They they are at war as uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia. So if you could say which of these countries uh, have at least uh, somehow in some uh, aspects positive image and which have a negative image. And Aesthetically, um, there is a very heavy Soviet angle. I'm not saying that that's good. I'm just saying it is like that, right? So if you report on Ukraine, for example, or even Georgia, right? Um, you quite often see pictures or images of old babushkas or Soviet style housing blocks and so on and so forth. Um, you know, the inspiration that I think the people of Belarus provide to people in Hong Kong or, or in the United States um, is amazing. Um, and, and I don't think there's enough attention to uh, the courage of the people in these countries. Um, and to the, the challenges that they try to overcome on a daily basis. A lot of the attention is focused on sort of the crisis of the moment. And, and unfortunately, there's been a few of those of late. Whatever happens in, in, on, on, the, on the Korean Peninsula has a direct impact on the Rush, Russia's foreign policy toward Eastern Partnership countries, VIPA countries, and EU altogether. The same goes for restarting the economic growth. Uh, I know that there is an active communication between EU and uh, Eastern Partnership countries in terms of uh, scoping for what these uh, countries need in terms of economic uh, reconstruction and uh, revival. The real threat, however, the risk of renewed fighting, of instability, is over the medium to long term. Uh, do you see any place for basically the men's group to play a significant and relevant role in this conflict? So, uh, we should really mobilize all of our entire our European experience and we have uh, we have an experience in that field. And what about Moldova? You know, should Moldova be hitched onto the EU membership cart? Um, rather than remaining an Eastern Partnership country.